Hey everyone, welcome to Grand Prepping. Tonight we're going to be talking about rope work, knots, lashings, aka pioneering stuff. How's Good. everybody doing out there? I, I, missed hope, you, I hope everybody here I'm saw. Busy. I got church work I'm doing. <laughs> I hope everybody here saw the preceding hour over at SOP, Southern Ohio Prepping, with Mouse Toes. Uh, Discover Sustainable and Rebel Canners. That was a great live stream. I got and, it on the phone. I've been watching. It was funny. Oh, yeah. And there was some great information, which so, two, two of the special guests there were surprised at when uh, the other one mentioned it. And so you want to find out what that is, you got to go back and watch it. It was good. It's about, it's about uh, halfway through, so you're going to have to yeah. start at the beginning and watch till you catch it. That's just yeah, that's it's, the, it's great. The way the cookie crumbles. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see y'all's here. Um, uh, Howie, uh, Food Forest Permit Culture, was in here. Uh, creative uh, Redundancy. Will at Just In Time uh, or JIT Preparedness. I wish he'd change his name back to Just In Time Prepping. JIT. <laughs> uh, uh, Jake Jacobs is here. Kaylin Strain. Arkman uh, Survival. Oh, yep. Uh, Backwoods Law, Carol Fishes and Loves Life. Uh, everybody's chatting. And of course, uh, Charles 64th Scale Fun is uh, Dave's Sun Channel. <coughs> and then we got uh, uh, we got Nina, Discover Sustainables is in here. Tibor, hey, how you doing? And Itching up here. Everybody's talking back and forth. Good, good. And got it. All right. So anybody else that's uh, in here, the numbers are up higher than that. So there's probably people just lurking. That's fine. Oh, Jake. Lurk and gain some uh, knowledge here. Yep. All right. So um, this is probably not going to be exactly what everybody thought. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff here to deal with rope work. Uh, not slashings, and in the scouting field, that's called pioneering. So um, let's uh, get on here with the show over here and cover some things. Oh, the things you can make with rope. And there are a lot of things. And this time, I, I even learned a lot when I was doing research on this particular one over what I learned in scouts. All right, so you got knots and so much more. Everybody thinks about knots. Oh, ropes, oh, you got to know how to tie knots. That's there's so much more. Um, how to join pieces of uh, uh, different ropes together, how to make the uh, different ones. Can anybody on this picture identify what the one on the far left, the one right next to uh, Uncle Al there is, that knot? Hello, Warren. I won't nope. say because I know what it yeah. is. Yeah, this the, the <laughs> knot right here, the in all in all gray. It's all it's called the king of knots. I give you everybody a couple chance to uh anybody in the chat to uh, think they know what it is, uh to uh rose. So if anybody out there thinks they know what the, all right, Kaylin got it. It's a bull line, bull line, the king of knots. Good it's great work, for when Kaylin. you're trying to set up a sill tarp or something like that over top of a hammock or something like that it's easy to string between two trees and it's very easy to take back apart yep. yeah and it does not slip it is used a lot in for rescuer rescuing and climbing all right now knots are used in what's called lashing lashing is where you put sticks and stuff together to make a structure of sorts whether it's big or small these are some drawings 
All right, guys, put away your mouse traps. Mouse is in the house. Yeah. And so these are different things you can build using ropes, paracord, twine, whatever. Uh, oh, now we're going to go to the real ones. See? They, you know, this is what was built at scout camps. They, uh, as part of their projects, they got to make uh, projects for to earn their pioneering merit badge. And so they make all sorts of things. Now they can uh, make it like a, chair, a little soft uh, chair out of a tarp and some uh, three uh, um, poles. Or if you're really industrious, you can make yourself a nice reclining chair out of sticks and branches and stuff. You want a hammock support and there's no trees around to uh, uh, hold, your, hold your hammock up? Lashings, knowing your ropes and stuff. You can build all sorts of things. I'm not exactly sure what they were building here. It almost looks like they have a swinging gong bonger in the middle there that they built. But there's all sorts of things you can build. And scouts will build amazing things. And everything you see here is sticks and rope tied together. And some of the stuff, oh, yeah, it holds people up. Hey, a lookout tower holds people up. Or can hold a lot of people. Knowing your ropes, your knots, your lashings, you can build amazing things. Hey, you have a bug out location. It has a creek across there, but you don't want to, you know, you want to be able to get across, but you don't want to build a huge expensive bridge. Hey, branches, ropes, you can build you can build a bridge across the creek. Different types of bridge. Now, probably the most famous bridge among in scouting is called the monkey bridge or the rope bridge. And Scouts love making it because they get up on, on these things and they have contests to who can flip the other person off. Um, knowing your lot, your knots, you can make uh, cargo nets, climbing nets, all sorts of uh, cool nets you can, if you know your knots, how to do your lashings. After all, cargo nets have been around for hundreds of years. Thousands. Since thousands, you know, for sailing ships and stuff, they've had to, you know, the, all the sailors know how had to know how to make and repair cargo nets. Well, it's the same with fishing nets. Fishing nets are the same principle. And here's they've been fishing using nets. fishing nets since you know, well, quite a time. times. Yeah, and so here's you know, one type of fish, one not used in fishing nets. There's a different type not used in fishing nets. And if you can if you can zoom in on this one later, sometime you'll see see at least six different knots used in these different fishing nets, except for the blue one, that's machine made. Shh. <laughs> yeah, but you know, but it's, if you are in a disaster situation and you don't have rope and you need to make something, but how do I make rope? Hey, that's part of pioneering. They teach in Boy Scouts. They teach them how to do that, and you have these nice little old-fashioned um, rope machines that you need to use the three or four strand on here. In Scouts, they teach you how to build one. They have all, all right. the plans for it. I want to add something. Mm -hmm. If you go over to the eye, we'll go looking for it here in just a second, but the King of Random actually showed how to take pop bottles cut down, and he shows how to build the machine to make your own cordage using pop bottles. Yeah. So I will see if I can't find that video. Cool. Yeah. So there are, you know, lots of ways to make it. And there's, uh, you can buy, you know, they got plans to how to make all these contraptions to make rope. Here's a, here's, this is from a YouTube channel. This is one of, one of the pictures from it, where they made one that they actually hooked up to a uh, drill to make it to make it go faster, and here's another one where from another YouTube channel where they're uh, actually making the rope and showing how the process of doing it. It's a good, um, it's a it's a good skill to have. And Tibor is absolutely right. I'm going to stop and throw Tibor's comment up here. If you can braid hair, you can make rope. Yep. 
because the cowboys in the old west used to braid their lariats out of mm -hmm. horse hair because horse hair is better for roping cows and horses it don't you ever rope burn them? right yeah my i i have one of my dad's is it in here no it's just out in the shop one of my dad's uh lariats when he was a, a professional rodeo uh all around cowboy and yeah it's uh, it's a totally different type of rope there's hey, a machine, old machine yes I put that in private chat because Charles 64 scale fun is not an authorized blue oh. wrench. Hang on, hang on, hang on. That's on. I, I don't have it up on that one. So I'll have to change that and I'll have to go back and change it in a second here. Okay. So uh, you, you can buy modern rope making machines if you want to be making a lot of rope. Okay. And so let me go to private chat. Okay. And pull that up. And I will bring this up here and show this in a minute. Let me get back over here. Hey, Courtney. Hey, Courtney. All right. <clears throat> now, guys, this is good. This, I'm going to go over this. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because you guys can go to Google. Google Pioneer Merit Badge Pamphlet, not workbook, pamphlet. And you can download the, a PDF of the pamphlet. Where it teaches you a lot of stuff we're going to be talking about here real quick. And there are 10, 10 major steps in the to get to earn the merit badge. And it first talks about, you know, first aid hazards, all the things you need to talk about that. Of course, first aid is, is a part of a lot of um, Boy Scout merit books, uh, merit badges. Um, oh. Very true, backwards. What do you say? Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things, whipping a rope is one, or fusing in the ropes. That's one of the things you have to do in the very beginning to get start earning ranks, even for merit badges, is to learn to earn uh, ranks. You got to learn certain knots and how to whip and fuse the ends of ropes. I think that's just to get your tenderfoot, if yes, I remember right. It is. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, knots to learn, clove hitch, butterfly knot, round turn. Two half hitches, rolling hitch, water knot, carrick bend, sheep shank, sh sheep, sheep's shank, sheet bend. The sheep bend is a sailing knot. Uh, you know, square lashings, diagonal lashings, round shear, tripod, floor lashings, all the things you have to do to learn it. Explain, you know, uh, all the all these different things. These are all the different things you have to do. What was that, Dave? I said hello to Ginger. Oh, hey, Ginger Ninja! Woohoo! These are all the things you have to do, learn to do to earn the pioneering merit badge in scouting, and every good prepper should know everything about the pioneering merit badge. You go out and hunt a deer, you're going to need to have to know how to make a tripod properly to, to get it up there and skin it and do stuff with it. A lot of stuff. So, yeah, these are all the things you have to do to earn the Pioneering Merit Badge. Other things you can do with knots. Does everybody remember how big macrame was back in the 60s and 70s? Well, guess what? It hasn't gone away. It's gone, to, it's gone uh, mainstream New York uh, fashion district. But it also goes, you know, these other things. Your A lot of your handmade... Um, Hammocks that you can buy, macrame knots, and there's a lot of fashion that is macrame, which is not tying. Uh, this outfit here was listed for two hundred and uh, two hundred and twenty-five dollars, I believe it was, and this one here was three hundred and sixty-five dollars for this macrame dress. Guys, you get bored in the winter time, make some money. <laughs> And then, you know, this, yeah. froze. this froze. here is a la lady making the uh, knots, you know, making a macrame dress. Oh, belts are simple to make. My yeah. cousins used to make belts all the time. You can make them and, out of paracord, too. Um, exactly. And sometimes, you know, they, they take and make it, and then they add on uh, leather belt, belting ends on it. 
because a pair, a uh, macrame belt sometimes is a lot more comfortable than a leather belt. Of course, for the guys, I mean, there's just no helping the guys. I mean, there is no fashion macrame good for guys for some reason. Everything, every picture I could find was back from the 70s, you know. And Dave's hiding because I think Dave actually wore that. <laughs> Not hardly. That's just disgusting looking. Okay, folks. <laughs> Voice of its uh, reason before we go into books. Macrame was used by the Romans when they twined jute cord into sandals and then mm -hmm. they put over leather. The leather one was for marching. The juke cord one was around the camp because they want to relax their feet yep. or go to the showers or the bathhouse. That's what they wore. Okay, Gil. Yeah. So if you want to learn about, about this, any of the stuff we've been talking about, there are books for it. Hey, Howie. You can download... Uh, off of off of the Google, the Google Drive, you know, if you look for it, you know, plenty of people have uploaded PDFs of the Pioneering uh, Merit Badge pamphlet. There are some great books out. Some of these books are, are rather old, such as this one by John Thurman, who is the chief, uh, the camp chief at Gilwell Park. Gilwell Park is the center of scouting worldwide in England. And so he had a bunch of books. And there's some other books that are some really good things you can make with knots. Some really cool stuff. Rope and knots. All sorts of different projects and things you can do. Learning how to splice rope, other parts of rope work. These are good books. I went through and uh, sneak peeked all to make sure they were good stuff. I got a couple of these. Then there are the macrame ones. And one of these books, I'll point it out to you, my, my cousins and my sister actually have, but hey, any of the homesteaders that are or gardeners out there that want to hang, hang pots indoors and don't want to spend 40 bucks for a good pot hanger, make your own. This is the one my cousins had. Yes, it's dated, but this, the, the patterns and stuff can still are still being used and just tweaked a little bit for modern times. Well, so I will add this. Some of those macrame um, patterns, mm -hmm. if you use, stick with the same pattern long enough, you can actually make a fishing net using macrame. Yeah. Yep. And so, I um, mean, there's a lot, a lot of, you know, cool house design stuff that, you know, you know, the modern, modern things for the modern home and stuff. Hey, you know, it's a macrame. A lot of stuff. And if you All guys right. want to have paracord and macrame, you can make a lot of things with paracord, macrame mm -hmm. paracord suits. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> but the only, thing, the, the only thing I'll use paracord to make would be a sling. The paracord, though, is great for making some of those um, pictures I showed back at the beginning of Scout Camp. The uh, the table, you know, the tables and stuff, you know, and the and the, and the camp uh, projects in camp, uh, the chair and stuff. It's great for making those. Um, but yeah, there's uh, there and if you need to, you can take paracord, and if you have the rope, one of the rope machines there, you can start make a paracord rope that is super super strong. But you got to be careful, folks. Uh, do we still have more, or was that it on the slides? Yeah, that, that was it on the slides. Okay. Paracord in a rope, you have one danger. It's not designed to hold a certain weight limit. And also, you have the yo-yo effect. Once you read the stretch point, you either snap or you go boing the other direction like a slingshot. Yeah. And there's, there's two main – well, I should say there's three main types of paracord. There's stuff from Titan Survival – they got two different levels, and you got the cheap China crap. Don't buy cheap China crap. It will not only let you down, but cause you to get hurt in the long run. Somewhere yeah. in my, one of my old videos playlist, and it says old videos. It's from my old channel. I did a review test on different paracords, including the old version of Titan Paracord. They now have their XT line, which is 770 uh, pounds test. Okay. Because it actually has a strand of Kevlar in it, giving it a little extra strength. Now, if you take five or six strands of that and turn it into a braided line, then you're looking at a thousand pounds. You you don't exponentially grow because you're using 
well, five strands of 770, it doesn't become five times 770, but it does increase its strength. It's not an exponential growth. There goes Gil yeah. again. He's Sorry. got the circle of that's, is that me or is that just Gil? Yeah, I'm, I look okay. Maybe just you. Maybe you. All right. Um, I do have right. something to share. Yes. All right, D Dave, uh, go ahead and type uh, in the chat so I can make uh, Charles a mod. I got that set up there. Right, while they're doing that, folks, let me get my box of stuff. Now, if you're going to get rope, make sure it's specified for the purpose you're using. Now, this is boat rope, okay? Whoops, have it upside down. This is used for docking. Different thing, uh, each rope has a different purpose. This is waterproof, rot proof. It ties up your boat pretty good. You can th throw it out. Boat use. Do not use this for lassoing. Do not use this for tying down a truck. Only for uh, marine use. Yeah. And then you, everybody got the cheap boat, like Dave says. Chinese rope that cool is always. This is fine for. Uh, you know, backyard camping, hang up your clothes and stuff. But serious, folks, I would not trust this in a real survival situation. If you go camping, put up a tent, uh, tie off something, this is fine. Yeah, but, tying off the tarp or whatever. Right, but nothing else. I wouldn't use that. All right, Backwoods brought up something, and it's something I've got for you to share. Okay, hang on one second here. I'm just okay. uh, taking care of one more here. Come on, Darren, let me add it. There it is. And got Dustin. All right. Uh, it's the mule tape one. Uh, mule tape? Yeah, go up. No, it's something I've got to share. Oh, uh, I, I got a spool, uh, a 10,000-foot spool of mule tape that was given to me by a guy that was uh, retiring from uh, electrical work. Okay, you got something else to share? Uh -huh. There. Okay, there it is. All right. And add to stream. Boom, boom. Okay, backwards brought up, you know, the knot, some of the knots that they need to have for training. And if you really want to learn a knot that will help save your behind, then go check out this one. And let me copy that link over for people. Uh, I think it'll work. We'll find out. There it goes. There's the link for it. That way you guys can go check out these. And it's got videos on how to tie the knots properly. No, I show seven here, but you can go learn more at the bottom. Yep. And yeah, cool. All right. Now I'm going to share something else here now. So everybody check that out what they put up there. Um, there's the, uh, there's the link he put in. So, Check that out. And I'm going to go back over here to this one here. U.S. Scouting Service Project. Merit badges. Boom. Over on the left-hand side down here. Uh, where is it? Um, is it cl climbing? So, climbing merit badge. Another one where you learn a lot to do with rope. Harnesses, belaying, repelling, and knots, and knots, and knots. They, they you learn a lot of knots in doing getting the climbing merit badge. And you can find all this. You don't have to go to scout camp. You can learn this stuff on your own. There is uh, there is the pamphlet. Then there are workbooks, and then there are a bunch of videos out there you can find on it that scouts put out to help other scouts learn to do the knots and back here boom okay and so if i can just let me go back up one page here and this is the link control c for the u.s scouting service project that was my go-to as a scoutmaster uh website okay folks if you're going to do repelling and stuff Make sure you go to a climbing store or a store. Did you freeze? I froze for a second. Okay. Yeah. Make sure that 
if everybody's selling ca carabiners. Don't go to the hardware store and buy a carabiner. That is not for climbing or rescue. You will fall to your death. Yeah, yeah, it'll snap. You have to go and get the correct ones from a climbing store or hiking store or mountaineering store. Because I tell people, if I test it and it goes snap, you just wasted your money. It has to be approved carbon bean. Sorry, can say it today. Carbon yeah. beaner. Carabiner. Carabiner, sorry. <laughs> Think of the Caribbean. Caribbean. Yeah. With Jack with Jack Sparrow, the Caribbean. Okay, another thing is, like Gil says, this is hemp twine. Okay, folks? Now yeah. I usually have I'm out of it right now. I have hemp twine, I have uh Kevlar cord, I have Kevlar um uh, shoot. Kevlar thread. I got Kevlar cord, Kevlar thread. I can't think of Dave. Is there a third one for Kevlar? You got Kevlar strips. No, but I, when it comes to cordage, I would stick with the standard. I wouldn't try buying high end Kevlar cordage for the simple fact is Kevlar by the foot is stupid expensive. Right. Because it is, A, it's a high tensile strength. Kevlar is actually what they use in designing bulletproof vests. Um, you get enough of it in the right way, uh, woven the right way, you'll stop most rounds. Right. Um, I'm but not it's going stupid to. stupid expensive. It is. Reason why I know about this, I fix saddles and I use Kevlar cord and thread in the saddles. You do not want cotton in a saddle. Used to be nylon, but nylon that over the years will crack and disintegrate yeah. because of pollution and the horse sweat and salt and stuff so everybody who does saddles we use kevlar and which i'm out of it because I okay i got some questions questions here to answer first of all um for will at uh, jit prepared us no there is no merit badge for knots however you have to earn you're supposed to earn um your first class rank before you really start working on merit badges, however, a lot of troops have the scouts as they're earning their uh, scout rank, tenderfoot, uh, second uh, second class and first class, start um, taking a couple of uh, merit badges such as first aid, emergency preparedness, and pioneering. But for each rank, you have to learn to tie. Uh, you start out with the uh, square knot and the overhand knot. And then you got to learn how to do uh, whipping and fu fusion. Uh, there's a bunch of knots you have to learn for each specific rank advancement. Plus, the, as you know, the pioneering, the climbing, and a couple other ones, you learn certain knots that are taught specifically for those merit badges as well. The other thing is, um, scouts is worldwide. Uh, started in England, then America, Japan, uh, Philippines, uh, Mexico, Canada, Spain, Switzerland, Germany. Yeah, yeah. Scouts is worldwide. All right. Um, let me see how he says uh, for uh, sending rope. Right. Okay. All right. Now, um, I show a prussic knot there who you can share so people can see what a prussic knot is. That's one of the few knots that I use a lot of because when yeah. you're trying to do a, uh, let's say you're putting a sill tarp up and you need to attach uh, other lines to it or you want to attach your sill tarp to it in such a way that you can adjust it so you can slide it back and forth or tighten it or loosen it, whatever. A prussic knot is the best way to attach your sill tarp to your draw line. Mm -hmm. And you know, as you can see, just to the just to the left of the big picture, there are, are, are the details of how to tie it. There, um, third row down, right next to it, there in black and white. So yeah, and that's another one too. Yeah, there are several of the pictures there showing how to tie the knot. Now there's one other one here. Now I'm going to show. I'm going to switch over here from that one there, guys. You can Google all these knots and stuff. There's plenty of videos out there, and here's proof of it. Constrictor knot. Simple knot. Um, different, different videos. 
froze. Uh, different videos here showing how to tie constrictor knots. See, very simple videos going over it. And this is all on the constrictor knot. You can type in any type of knot you want to learn how to tie. And they'll teach you how to tie the knot. Now, I can't do it here because it's I, it's kind of hard. to It, it works better in person. Uh, when I was teaching my scouts about the importance of tying knot, I, I had a what we called the magic overhand knot where the knot disappeared or appeared depending on how I wanted it to work. And it basically was to teach the scouts, you tie knots with your hands, not your eyes. And to prove that, I would also take and tie behind my back, behind my back, so they're watching me, and I'm not looking at what I'm tying, and I would tie the square knot, the bullion, and a couple other knots behind my back. And they'd be like, how are you doing that? You tie knots with your hands. It's called muscle memory. You learn to tie a knot, and you practice it. One of the neatest knots, I'm going to put it up and put it up here. Um, all right. It's now called the woggle knot, but it used to be called the Turk's head knot. But people were afraid that, the, you know, anyone that used it would be, a, oh, it's insensitive. No, it's, you know, some, and I have talked to some people of Turkish descent, and they are PO'd that it changed it to calling it the woggle. They are proud of the knot. So. Right, because the Turkish used to do it, mm -hmm. and not only the Turks, but the Air, uh, the Air, uh, the Arabs and stuff, the sheiks, the band they had going around the head, holding the uh, the um, uh, brain fart here, the, the 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 cloth on their head is basically an enlarged uh, Turk's head knot. That's why it's called a Turk's head knot. Right. Anyway, they uh, my my son became a master at doing this. He was sitting in front of the TV tying this, not looking at what he's tying, watching a TV show and was would make like 10 or 15 of them for um, the uh, National Youth Leadership Training for his guys. All right, here's what you guys are going to have to make. And he'd, he'd give them to him an example, show them how to do that. And they had that one to make sure what they were tying looked like that when they were done. But yeah, there are a lot of ways Showing you know, tying the, the knot and it teaches you how to do it, all the different type of knots. Okay. And if anybody's wondering what, what this woggle knot is for, on the neckerchief slide, that's what the, the slide is. It's a, it's a uh, Turk's head knot or woggle. Okay. For those people, another place where knots are used often mm -hmm. fishing. Oh, yes. Okay. I do freshwater and seawater. This is freshwater line. Sometimes I will use brass or I will use stainless steel wire for fishing because this will snap off if I have a really big fish. So I'll switch over to stainless steel or <laughs> brass or, or the heavy duty wire for uh, bait lines. Uh, I have to say a few things on cordage cordage is a little different this is cotton cordage you could use this for cooking it's safe it won't toxify you and then you have the um how much am i caught this one dave you know this one and also gil gil ah uh, yes we use that in construction this is what we use to put for the uh the, the string line for grade checking Right. Now, everything has a difference. And this one is the standard garden twine you use outside. Okay, mm -hmm. folks, different materials, different uses, know what strengths they are. Because you don't want to have a line and you got somebody important on the other end and says, did you test this? No, I thought you did. <coughs> All of a sudden, <coughs> Okay, and here's another little tip, too. If you're trying to attach a piece of cordage to another piece of cordage, let's say you've got your draw line going from tree to tree and you want to hook your siltarp to it and you want it, you know, to hook one rope to another, the rope you're hooking to your main line is always smaller than your main line. 
So if you're going to hook something to say like a rope, a regular, you know, weight bearing rope, um, use something like a uh, paracord. If you're, main line is paracord then use something like bank line something that's already water semi waterproof you know somewhat re, you know resistant to the weather most bank line is black because it's tar infused so don't use that on anything that you don't want to get discolored don't use it around anything you're going to put food with it or anything that might get warm because it'll go poof really fast it burns well too another trick yes, with it bank does. Line. All right, I'm gonna uh, since Al's talking about fishing here, um, I'm gonna share something for you fishermen out there. Of course, most of you fishermen probably already know this, yes, but there is the surgeon's knot. There's surgeon's loop in the regular sur surgeon's knot. So I can get a bigger picture up there, and basically it's similar to a square knot, but there's an extra uh, turn in there to make it bite down. And that's what, because uh, a lot of your surgeons are fishermen, and that's how they are securing down their their um their hooks and the leaders of the hooks to the main line. Remember, folks, this is small. Your line is about this big. Be right okay, back. and then you have to use surgeons practice this. They a lot of surgeons I know are fly fishermen. So they use forceps to tie these knots. Mm -hmm. You try that on a cold, wet day and with this size wire. This is 28 millimeter. Yeah. Now, for those of you who don't believe what we're talking about, especially with the forceps, go back and watch the TV show MASH with Henry Colonel Henry Blake, who was always tying... In there, he had all the little clamps and everything, and little vice things, on, and he's always tying fly fishing things with the forceps and everything else. But yeah, if you watch the show, he was very good at microsurgery, and he used the same forceps to reattach legs, fingers, mm -hmm. hands, eyeballs, yeah. and stuff. So yeah, you're. Uh, if you know, if you know a good surgeon, he can pro he probably makes a lot of good fishing. Uh, yeah, uh, some of my friends are surgeons, and they fish yeah. with me. Now, folks, you got to understand, you have to practice these nuts. The smaller the rope and cordage, the harder it is. When you get 28 millimeter and you're trying to do a surgeon knot and you have poor eyesight and you wear three or four pairs of glasses and a loop, it's hard. Mm -hmm. All right. And Tibor says you twist wire leaders. Yeah, but if you twist it in the wrong place, the wire leader and the line, ping, it'll strip. Oh, Carol, no, no, you forgot immediately. Time to relearn. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. On um, fishing nets, most commercial fishing nets nowadays that are not regional are machine made and plastic, and it's one of the biggest waste problems in the ocean. I've been on charter boats that we hit us. Damn Chinese fishing. You ever get rescued by the Coast Guard and they tow you in because your boat's all tangled up in an abandoned Chinese net and with tons of fish on it and it snapped and you're like. Okay, I hate not commercial a... nets. I'm looking at here. I'm looking at something else here. And someone, someone put out something called a trucker's hitch and it's not a trucker's hitch. True. Let's see it. I gotta make sure. Uh, I'm gonna so I'm gonna put this up here. This is not a trucker hitch. This is that's not a trucker hitch. Uh, let's see here. Find the one. Yeah, that's a trucker hitch with a single bite on it. And if you're using nylon cord, you got to put a double bite on it like that right. one there. That's a trucker's hitch. That is a true trucker's hitch. Yes, yeah, you gotta be yeah, yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is the first knot my dad taught me, and I was I wasn't even in scouts yet. He taught me to tie this trucker's hitch with a single bite and a double bite. A bite is where it loops around here on it, and so it pinches that the rope pinches down on itself. 
that's a single bite. And when it has the second bite uh, wrap around and pinches down, that's the second bite. And that gives you make sure it doesn't slip off like it's some cheap nylon Chinese uh, ropes will like to slide apart. And that's why you put the double bite on there to prevent that. Uh, Where do they ha have? Go ahead, Dave. No, I'm... Yeah, so there's, there's another good good uh, picture of it there. But yeah, so I mean, to me, that I've used that probably, I've used the trucker's hitch 10 times more than I have any other knot other than tying my shoes. <laughs> because me and Gil... And Dave, were you in the time period before the trucker's tape that you threw over the load, or was it after? Both. Both. Because I did that on the farm when we were hauling bags of feed or the old bales of hay. Now it's rolled. I hate rolled yep. because you can't lift those damn things without a bobcat. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting old. I'm not that strong either. <laughs> Backwood brings up a very valid point, too. Uh, most of the skills you learn, if you don't keep practicing, they vanish. Mm -hmm. They're perishable skills. So yeah. it, you need to practice them fairly regularly to build up muscle memory. So if you need to use it, it's automatic. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, you know, there's some things you like, you know, you've, you've done so much. It, the more you've done something, the longer it takes you to lose it. So if you're just learning a skill, you need to practice it quite often. That's why my son sat in front of the TV tying woggles and practicing it so he could do it at, at scout camp and show everybody. And he'd do this, make some of them for examples for the guys to see it, the finished product, but he made them make their own. That was part of their thing for the NYLT. They had to make their own woggle for their neckerchief. Right. Folks, if you want to get a real fist fight, mess up a Hawaiian fisherman's calf net that he had oh. knit it. Guarantee you, you're going to have less teeth in your head for the next five minutes after he pounds the living hell out of you. It takes two months to do a perfect cast net because you throw it over your head into the water to cast over the fish. If it's not balanced right, and the Hawaiians taught me to do this, oh, I forgot. Yeah. The Hawaiians it, aren't the only ones. Samoans, Tongans, any of the islanders. Oh, and then you oh, got the, the you got the, you got the, all the Polynesians and stuff, and then you have the um, in the Mediterranean. Anyone that fishes in the Mediterranean that use cast net, yeah. Seriously, they will beat you to a pulp. It takes and a lot, and, and then they'll make you make it make them a new one. Right, you'll, be, you'll be a slave. <laughs> right, two months doing all those knots, and he told me there's over two thousand knots, and it has to be balanced right. Because it moves as a, um, how can I say? It? it swims through the air, and before it hits the water, it, it envelops the water. Because if it doesn't do that, it won't catch fish. All it does is just balls up and sink through the bottom. So it has to, how can he say it? English. Like a jellyfish spreading out, and it goes down. And then if anything underneath it, you're caught. If it's uh, macrame or knitted wrong, what it does when you throw it, it just like that. And, and then the it, fish go, nan, 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 boo, boo, nan, you missed me. Yeah. And Miss Lori, have, Queen of the North, welcome. Hi, Lori. And then you have another two months figuring out what was the boo boo. And it could be only one knot, too. Okay, can I find it here? Uh, uh, videos uh, i mean i'm not going to play it because i don't want to get ding but hey um you know all the ones about throwing a cat a cast net this is just how to throw it and there are some you know some good videos on throwing a cast net so but then you can also uh making a cast net if you're interested in it the best my, one it, go ahead my grandmother born in 1899 up the, above Coeur d'Alene in the panhandle of Idaho, uh, where, where they were raised, they were bordered on the in, Indian reservation up there, and they were friends with a lot of the Indians. The Indians could go out and net fish at the falls. No one else could, unless you were go, taken out there with the Indians to go net fishing. 
that's the only time you could net fish. And she went out there and learned with them about net fishing. So if you're in a survival situation, that's a skill you might want to learn if everything's gone. Well, it's right. the same way up in Michigan. The Saginaw and a couple of the other tribes are the only ones that have the right to go net fishing. And when it's perch season, don't get in the way. They run you over to get those nuts in the water. They love themselves some perch. Yep. I like fresh perch too, just not from Michigan. True. <laughs> okay, folks. Another thing you could use for nodding, and I don't have it, but I'll you just use this one. If you have a bunch of this and you have willow branches, do you know what you can make out of it if you know how to Aspirin. lash it? What? Aspirin. No. It's a type of, <laughs> it's a type yeah, of fish can, trap. It's a You can make fish. aspirin out of willow. True. Yeah. But I'm catching fish. And a lot easier than a net. You cone it up. You, you knit it. Survival and, Lily actually made one. Right. And she has a good video on that. So everybody yep. take a look at that one. And that's yeah, well, what the reason I the reason I brought up aspirin is after you cut all them branches down and make that, you're gonna need some aspirin to get rid of the headache you've got after sitting there for several hours staring at each individual strand as you do it. Yeah. Hey Gray Note. Hey Gray. Exa exactly. Last year when we had um Dan from I'm just having a brain fart. Um Denmark on here. Uh, we went a different way with it then. This time we were going a different way with not you. The way with knots and ropes and everything else, we could turn this into a good five-hour video covering all the different things you can do with knots. I mean, it's just you know amazing the you know the what it is because it's like the uh, let me put this up here real quick. I would not know what you're talking about there, Miss Nina. Have no clue. Uh, so it's like, you know, you know, this is what, you know, one of the things I just kind of made me change what I was originally thinking about all the things you can make with rope. Not just knots, but so much more. And that's what I wanted to cover tonight was so much more. It's because there's so much more we can do. We've gotten into fishing hey, in a survival situation. If you can make nets or if you can take a, a willow branch and make a fish trap or make it or take a, a birch pole and make a good fishing pole, fly pole, whatever, and you can catch fish. There's there's one thing nobody's mentioned tonight. Not a single person, nobody in the side chat or you two. Okay. Go sewing. With it. Sewing. Oh there are yes. several knots that are key in sewing. You can't just put a regular knot when you're sewing something because it ain't gonna work right. There are several yeah. different knots you need to learn for sewing as well. So mm -hmm. if in a grid down situation and you are by yourself because you are, think you're a lone wolf and king of the hill, you better know how to sew to fix your clothes when you rip them falling down the hill that you thought you could climb up with that 80-pound backpack, Mr. Bear. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right because I did cover saddles and that's part of sewing is stitching saddles and stuff. That's a little mm -hmm. work. Uh, Will does it. I do it. We know our knots in it. And we know how to double strand and knot it correctly. What we didn't go down really seriously, folks, is splicing different material into ropes. Yes. There, were, there, uh, there were some pictures I was looking at, but, I did, but we covered that last year. And oh, I, I didn't would, see wasn't going to uh, uh, hammer too much on it this year. Uh, but like sewing, it, sewing alls, I mean, uh, any leather working <laughs> stuff. Besides, you know, just your sew, just, you know, sewing, you know, buttons on and stuff like that. You know, if you do, you know, shoes. If your shoes start coming apart, you're going to need one of these things. To know how to, how to sew um, for your, you know, that that using those as well. So yeah, remember, the same, same goes with your uh, canvas tarps too, because mm -hmm. you know, if you have a canvas tarp, a regular needle is not going to go through it very no. well, or you're going to want to putting holes in your in fingers. Fact, that's a, a specifically one of these things are used for uh, the sewing awls like this are also besides leather. They're also used for the, um, the, the, the canvas tarps and stuff. Right. And then there, then there are some special needles, the curved needles and the big monster needles. Yeah, there are a bunch of different type needles and stuff for sewing to get stuff through. So, right. 
And folks, hey, those, those little speedy all stitchers, they do not work on sales. Because I have to point this out because people, oh, just use this. Sail cloth is one of the toughest canvases you have to fight with. You have yeah. to have the brace on your hand, and you have to have the DD bag to go with it. And we're talking, you're going to be there for a long time if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. And um, some, some, some of the needle. Crows. Yeah. All right. Yeah, some of the needles on that's not a good picture of it. Come on, no. there's a good one on it. Uh, let's see. They have a they have a channel on the one side for the thread to go through. So you're not trying to push the thread. And sometimes you can cut the thread if you're pushing through a hard material. If you're not using the right needle, you will cut the thread that you're trying to push through. Right. So. Now this is one. Whoops, let me get in focus. Hang on, let me bring you up. There you go. Okay, I do a lot of sewing. And this one, especially for tapestries, okay? Mm -hmm. I have another one for upholstery, another one for more horse gear, okay? Mm -hmm. I have another set for sailing, because my nephew likes to sail a little, whatchamacallit, it's not a dinghy, what they call those little things. Skiff. Skiff. So I have to repair the sails. Uncle Alan, can you repair this? Yeah. yeah. Hey, not Garden happy. State Gardener. Hi, Joe. Okay, listen. Uh, yeah, I mean, these are skills that you know. The group make besides you know, there you can do you if you learn some of these skills, you can do hobby stuff with it as well, or you can do it without having to take it to someone else and and pay high dollar for them to do the work if you know how to do it. Your cousin's holding the gear hostage. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But if you want a good job, there are openings in upholstery right now for car upholstery and furniture upholstery because it's a big thing right now. Yeah. In fact, um, Scott at, at um, Hidden Valley Homestead um just he just packed up this week and moved up from la up to northern idaho up to bonner county up there um when he first got married he was working in his father-in-law's upholstery shop for many years ah oh, tibor has a good point okay learn the saddle stitch you can make just about any any leather project yep uh, I think Will dropped out because I don't see him talking about sewing the stuff he does. Now he's Will at twelve percent at oxygen, so he yeah. tires out easily. Yeah, we're almost at top of the hour. You guys got anything going on on Friday? Yeah, news. Yeah, uh, and I've sent Dave a couple links. <laughs> There's some idiot stuff going on right now. Uh, the biggest thing people need to worry about is between sometime between. Midnight tonight and midnight tomorrow night, the next 24, well, 25, 26 hours, expect some minor intermittent, low-level EMP activity. In other words, you're going to have cell phone troubles. You're going to have wireless troubles. Your internet service provider may have issues. It is because we are going to be hit with some very low velocity, very minor CMEs, as well as coronal hole winds. It's nothing major. Don't let certain channels, and they know who they are, and I'm not going to mention them, so I'm not going to give Gil a ding. I'd say my own channel, because I have. Um, Mostly for Canada. It's not the end of the world. It, we're not going to go back to the Stone Age right now, but you just expect some minor problems. The best thing to do is check out Suspicious Observers tomorrow morning. He will give you an update on the Emerald Spow, which I showed on my video the other day that I showed the little, hello, son, glad to see you again, or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, I showed his channel. I showed where to go get the information. That way you don't have to take my word for it. And they're all actual satellite imagery. It's not him making funny you know, words up on a screen. It's actual stuff you can go check out on Soho and SDO and all the other ones from NASA. You can go see the images yourself from theirs. So 
you know, just expect minor inconveniences. This is nothing major. If it was major, I would have done put out a video on it multiple times already. Okay. And also, and folks, there's the know. link. There's the link to suspicious observers. Right. And folks, that weird sound you hear in Ohio and Indiana, it's not the end of the world, like Dave says. It's not the solar flare. It's cicadas. Cicadas. Yep. Cicadas. Cicadas. Cicada bugs. Seventeen-year population coming out. Right. Here, so don't probably freak in the next couple of weeks. So don't freak out, folks. If you hear this weird sound, it's not aliens from outer space. It's the yes, cicada. 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 Yes. Yeah. Cicada. Cicadas. Because people are freaking out. What's that, Uncle Al? It's a bug. Go they away. are the loudest insect in the world. And when they get all together and start their mating call, it is highly annoying. Yeah. It's not Which means when, from... they, when they get busy out here, uh, I may actually wind up sweating like a stuck pig, pig over a roast on a spit because I'll have to lock this house down just so I can hear what you guys are saying. It's not the <laughs> end of the world. It's just what Dave says, those bugs. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, Carol wants to just eat them, just dip them in chocolate. <laughs> no, no. Uh, yeah. it, I don't live in the Aboriginal jungle, so um, no. Okay, and uh, Kaylin's put up here about Kaylin's talking here about Bennett's suspicious observers. Oh. Yeah, there, there the spaceweathernews.org. Spaceweathernews.org. He's got everything all on one page. Yeah. There's Will. Uh, Will. Hey, Will. We <laughs> thought yeah, we were out. We were talking about your uh, leather uh, work and your sewing, so, leather sewing, work. sewing leather and stuff. All right. So, so Dave, that's what Dave, Dave's going to be talking about uh, news and stuff. May throw some of this in on Friday. Uh, that's nine o'clock on Southern Ohio Prepping. Um, for and then on my other channel, Camp Patton Family Compound, will be why should you have chickens, or even even should you have chickens? We're gonna be talking about chickens for homesteaders and preppers. <gasps> preppers should have chickens. Wow, what a thought! They're no longer preppers; they're advanced preparedness engineers. Right. So, and so, yeah, there's, uh, what are we going to talk? That's what's coming up on Friday. <coughs> uh, Courtney, are you still here? What do you have coming up tomorrow night, Courtney? Courtney has a live stream tomorrow night. That's, oh, that's uh, uh, Banana Nana. Ah, uh, the, banana. Uh, the, where the, the, <coughs> the bandanas. The, yeah, but that, but I'm having trouble with words tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I've been busy the last two days. I'm hosting a family <coughs> on Friday until Monday mm -hmm. because we're trying to find them an apartment. And I've been washing clothes because most of the clothes are smoke and water damage. And right mm -hmm. now, uh, some of my relatives are taking care of them that their house until I get my house prepared. I've been busy. Sorry, Carol. No, you are uh, an advanced preparedness engineer. You're in training, but you're one. So, <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. So, um, my mama bear prepping every day. She comes out with a real cool video. I'm trying to see uh, Uncle Al comes out with cool videos every day too. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm trying to see if I can find. Ah, oh, Minuteman prepping also a good uh, guy to check on. Oh, so. Uh, so, uh, why family farm? That was, yeah, uh, that was yesterday. So I don't see her. He should pops up here as one of the ones to set the thing up on. Oh, well, anyways. So, and then, uh, uh, will is doing, is will doing a Thursday or a Saturday this week? I think both. Both. Will? Well, Carol, if that's what you want to call yourself, you can call yourself a tape. That's fine. Well, are you? Doing, <laughs> I know I, he's doing something on on subject matter on 
Thursday. I forgot about. It. I've been so busy. Sorry, guys. And oh, he, and, and grandma. That's who. She, that's who's uh, Carol's having on her. Yeah. But that, yeah, grandma. Yeah, but that. Oh shoot! I yeah. give up. Bandana Please. grandma. Right. What Dave says. I'm tired. I've been running around doing paperwork and stuff. <sighs> All right. Yeah. So, um, and those of you that didn't see um, the Dave's live stream just before us, there, pop it back up here. There it is, the canning one here. Let's talk about canning. He had um, mouse toes. Um, meet Miss Nina. Sustain, um, discover sustainable. And Tammy from Rebel Canners on his channel. If you didn't see that one, go see. Froze. Froze. There was some amazing information given out there that, <laughs> hey, some of the other, two of the, two of the ladies didn't know about it when uh, one of the ladies uh, gave a good, good um, suggestion about something for egg substitute. So if you want to find out what it is, you got to go watch Dave's. A video. It's about halfway through when they were talking about it. Right. And you're not going to be able to skip through it to find it. You're going to have to watch the whole thing. Whole thing, yeah. yeah. People were asking me, what was this? Okay. It's a baking sheet. I'm getting to the point where I can make test bars and maybe everybody will get one of old Richard. You, It won't melt at 122 degrees. It's edible. It'll last two years. Uh, you can shave it down to make a frosty, hot chocolate drink out of it. I still have to work out a few bugs. Okay. Also with nuts, too, after I get the thing figured out right. That's okay. what being a mad scientist. So uh, that's what's coming up. We got you know, plenty of live streams around. I know YouTube, uh, uh, the, uh, the platform here is not sending out as uh, all the notifications they should be in a timely manner. So, so you guys. Well, I can tell you why. Because it's like the little notice they sent out today to most of the content creators. By the way, we have the right to monetize everything on this platform, whether you're a part of the partnership or not. Yeah. That's why people like me have advertisements on their videos and I get nothing for it. Not a thing. Yeah. So, so no, uh, and also, folks, anyways, I'm not so gay. Guys, yeah, because there have been Can a I, lot of. Uh, go ahead, Joe. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to go there. Uh, so, you know, if you have a, a specific channel, check on check on them if they do it uh, at a specific day. Like uh, Dave and I are on Tuesdays and Fridays. Will is on Monday and thir Monday Thursday and. Saturdays, so and Courtney's on Wednesday evenings and some others. Hey, write it down, post it next to your computer, so you remember to go in and check it and uh, review it. And of course, like Mom Bear Prepping does stuff, does stuff every day at two o'clock Pacific time. She comes out with a video. So, all righty. So with that, we're gonna wrap it up here, folks. Thank you for coming in. If you haven't hit the thumbs up button, please hit the thumbs up button on your way out. That way, at least YouTube thinks you like the whole thing. <laughs> no, you're up to 16 watching and 20 likes. Yeah. Well, I know some people have dropped out because it was getting late for them. Right. And Yeah. So with that, everyone, stay happy, stay safe, stay prepared. Yes. And if you can, grow Go something. Go check out Kalen's 8, 8 p.m. Eastern. Yeah. So...